Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I am the ghost of Christmas awesome. Awesome. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Oh, we're doing Christmas stuff. I wasn't set up. Happy holidays, I guess. Merp. Uh, merp. So enthusiastic. I, I don't know. Blah, blah. But as you may gather, and by this title of the video, <laughs> it's there. Um, we are going to review the My Little Pony Holiday Special, the 2015 to be exact. And, well, uh, this comes out on the 22nd, three days away from Christmas. So we thought, hey, why not we cheer you guys with a little Christmas present by doing a Christmas review. Yay. In other words, we went for the cheap gift. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, before we dive into set reviews... um. First impressions are in order, I think. Hmm. All righty then. For for the year 2016 or what? That's New Year's. This is Christmas. Oh, the holidays. I shall raise all kinds of hell when we t- when we talk about 2016 in a nutshell. Oh, silver, silver. Yes. You're on a highway to hell. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Uh, but anywho, silver. What do you think of this comic? Well, I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, it is basically just some pony takes on classic holiday specials, which uh, I I just enjoy. I mean, it's always fun to see your beloved uh, entertainment sources do their own takes on things, usually to great comical effect. It really just depends on the story. We have several to choose from, after all. So I think I shall withhold the specifics until we get to the stories themselves. I will say, however, there, there were jokes in there that... I, Kind of spoiled the hearts for me, movie. It's like, wow, you guys are jerks. I mean it. No pony left behind. No pony left behind. <laughs> uh, all righty then, Sefi. What about you? I really like the um sarcastic, cynical take on the story. Like when it comes to like a you know certain stories, like a uh, with Rainbow Dash as Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I love how especially when um. The other deer is played by Diamond Tiara and Silver Spinner are like, oh, we love you now. Well, why didn't you love me before I was praised or something, blah, blah, blah. It's It's been a while since I've actually read this comic, but that was one of my favorite moments ever when reading it. I just love the cynical, sarcastic take on it and how the main six basically twist it. To a modern day. Also, I like Cup of Joe. He was nice. He was cool. Alrighty then. And as for me, this comic was a mixed bag of, I don't know. It's just a mixed bag. Good, bad. I don't know. I mean, I like it, but there's a few things here that made it fall flat on its face with some of the jokes. I, I liked it a lot, but I, I think I'm not used to the whole multiple stories kind of book probably but overall i do like it but i'm just a bit confused aren't we all yeah aren't we all yeah but anywho i I need to point something out first that we're not the first to review this i'm sure there's a whole other bunch of people who reviewed this but one of the key personnels online um linkara he reviewed this comic early on as part of his who? Christmas review. Oh, Safi, you are not going to pull a who on a linkara. <laughs> I say the nay. You may want to give me a link to his channel later then. I may want to give you a stern talking to a young lady. You know your internets. I've heard of the guy. I've never actually seen any of his content. Gasp. Le gasp, I know. You don't, you don't get the French gasp. You get the Brooklyn gasp. Oh, I... <laughs> Uh, boys. But anywho, he reviewed it. I think he did it pretty well for Ponies not being his favorite kind of shows. But uh, he did a good job. And well, if you want something quick and easy, go watch him. If you want more analytical or just derps, it's us. I'm sorry, Norman. Are you calling Linkara quick and easy? Really? You are imputing his honor, sir. I challenge you to a duel. I'm just saying that he does a better job at reviewing than us. Ow! 
you lose the duel. You didn't count to three. I did in my head. One, two, three. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ow! I wasn't ready. Hey, this, this is, is fun. fun to watch. Yeah, one, two, three. <laughs> I told you that time. <laughs> oh, great. Now we're in the Matrix. <laughs> oh, boys. Uh, talking about movies, that's something for later. Anyway, if you guys have not read this comic, um, please do read it because it's in the season and whatnot and will give you time to catch up. Welcome back. We start off the comic in the Cantalot train station. Um, Twilight Sparkle was visiting her parents and now she needs to go back to Ponyville. The only reason why she doesn't fly is because that is snowing and it's cold. I think she'll get frostbite. Or wing bite. Yep, true that. Spike complains and you know what? Being stuck in the train station is not kind of his favorite thing to do. So he decides to leave. Well, upon opening said door to the outside world, snow comes in. And they're stuck in there. So, like any responsible adult who has to wait in line, they complain and moan. Oh, well, Spike at least complains and moan. Um, Twilight is ready and prepared. She got a good book to read. Unfortunately for her, she forgot said book at the parents' place. And said book is Lord of the Rains. No? One, one, two, joke. No, well, no. I, oh, what? well, you want to joke. Oh, oh, the one rain to rule them all and in the darkness bridle them. <laughs> I... Never seen that movie either, so I can't help you. Oh, Safi, you go sit in the corner now, young lady. Hasn't no. Seen, hasn't seen Lord of the Rings indeed. Uh, fortunately for Twilight books is at the parents' place and her dad is reading it. Yay. <laughs> so Twilight here is now in the same boat as Spike, getting bored and annoyed. Fortunately for her, there's an open coffee shop. It's not Starbucks, but it's something similar. So she... Although although I I do just want to point out that as Twilight is wigging out, you see her shouting and uh in one panel and Underneath her uvula, it reads anguish, <laughs> yeah. which means Twilight's pretty hardcore to have that tattooed on inside her throat. Oh, God. Uh... <laughs> yeah, me really, think, tattoos hurt. Me thinks Twilight was going through a slightly uh, emotional phase when that happened. <laughs> Not phase silver, God. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, it's more a hiccup. <laughs> hey, but anyway... um. Princess Toilet Sparkle tackled the coffee sh- um, coffee store, or what do they call it? Oh, coffee kiosk. Yeah, she tackled yeah, the coffee, coffee kiosk. Coffee stand. Yeah. Come on, we're Americans. We're lazy in our words. <laughs> Just coffee stand. All right, coffee stand. Ki- kiosk, indeed. <laughs> hey, th- okay, I, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Americans and Europeans. Oh, yeah, yeah. But anywho, um, she tackles the coffee stand, and, well, she discovered that those books are books for fillies. And... Wow, she's a bit disappointed. But Spike says, you know what, I don't care, read me this book. And said book is The Flying Reindeer. Although, can I just quote Spike real quick? Yep. I'm tired, I'm cranky, I'm hungry, and I want you to pamper me. Read away. <laughs> now, if that does not describe the young attitude in a nutshell. In fact, it's just this clear, pure statement of intent, <laughs> even if it's selfish as can be. It's like, I salute you, Spike. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, at least Joe is helping. He's giving Spike a cup of hot cocoa with cookies, so yay. Is he, is, did Spike pay for that? I mean, uh, I feel like we're perhaps abusing the princess of Equestria's title here. Put it on her tab. Joe can claim it to the Equestrian Finance or something. I, I think they have it there. Although this raises a question that's been niggling at my mind for a little while. Twilight's stuck in here, but wouldn't a princess have, like, be able to ask for an escort to fly her to Ponyville. But this is Twilight. You have to remember, Twilight is the type of pony who doesn't want to abuse her power. So she rather takes a train. She doesn't want to abuse her power, but she's brainwashed ponies before. Come on! Come on! <laughs> canon and on canon That's all I have to say. <laughs> uh, oh, you say that now, but wait till we get to the... Wait till we get to issue 51. Oh, God. So is Twilight on the uh, moral high ground, or...? More on the false modesty. Probably. (laughs) But anywho, um, the first book, or the first story, is The Flying Reindeer. So long story short, The Flying Reindeer is a retelling of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. 
Rudolph has a red nose and gets conscripted by Santa to fly in the front line. So Santa has some torchlights, yay. So in this version of the story, Rainbow Dash, right? Is his name? Yes, it's Rainbow Dash. Wow. Sort of, I guess. It's more as Rainbow Dash as a deer goat uh, thing, I, I, I don't know. It's a deer, yeah, but you know, it's just like, wow, creativity level, over 9,000, yay. <laughs> but anywho. Rainbow Reindeer. Yeah. So, anywho, Rainbow Reindeer is one of those strange reindeers who can fly because she has a wing. And the other reindeers make fun of her, call her mean names, and rather play board games with themselves and like not Like Meropoly. Yes. Or Apology. <laughs> Never apologize. That's the first step to becoming a true troll. <laughs> or Gattleship. Yep. Let's see. There's There's a few more, if I can zoom in enough. Uh, Connect Four Look. <laughs> uh, Gilding Wars? I, Gilding Wars? I don't know. Oh, yeah. and Dandyland. I think that's the one I want to play. Dandyland. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just full, it's just full of guys going, ew, my. Oh, I'd rather, I'd rather play Space Dandyland in that case. Um, you and me both, sister. But anywho, with that, said reindeers, a rump of their way to the house and leave Rainbow alone. Ah, oh, poor Rainbow. She just wants to have friends and just wants to, what you call this? Well, just want to have friends and be feel part of a team. Unfortunately for her, Princess Luna slams her, like body slams. Oh, we're in the WWE, and Luna g- comes in with a suplex. Oh, the horror! <laughs> but what's this? Rainbow reindeer has a steel chair. Kapunk! Oh no! Is that even legal? <laughs> oh boy, nerds. That really jingled her bells. <laughs> oh yes, Elva. Rainbow has been known to use excessive violence with the chair. <laughs> oh boy. Back to the comics. Um, Spike is just wondering who wrote the book and yeah, Princess Luna. <laughs> Princess Luna wrote a kid's book. Yay! Oh my Self-insert god, Self-insert fan fiction, am I right? Yeah, 0 out of 10 unsubscribe worst book ever. <clears throat> yeah, but anywho. Princess Luna was in en route to send cakes or fruit cakes to the denizen of Equestria until a flying fowl ran into her. You might say it was foul play. Yes. <laughs> and to take vengeance... She take one set fruit cake and hurl it to the duck or swan. And I think that's a duck, right? It's a goose. Ah, goose. So take one fruit cake and hurl it to the goose. With breakneck speed, Rainbow Dash catches set flying fruit cake and saves set goose. And well, she does a scolding to the princess of the night, saying that you can't just go around throwing cakes at things that annoy you. It's not nice. That's not nice. <laughs> I do like Princess Luna's response. I'm a princess of Equestria. One does not need to be nice to the feathered fowl. That's why she is. But anywho. You're a feathered fowl. <laughs> yep. On behalf of my feathered brethren, I find that highly offensive. <laughs> Especially from your favorite princess, nonetheless. Well, this is pre-Nightmare Moon, so I'm assuming she's going through a phase. Yeah, it's not a phase! Gosh. It's not a phase, Mom. <laughs> you've, you've never heard of phases of the moon? <laughs> but anywho, Luna, uh, getting fed up with the situation, gets the crate back up and ready, and stretches her wings! And she screams in pain. Apparently, said foul did some damage to her wings. Ouch, not good. In Soviet Russia, chicken wing breaks you. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. So, Luna, seeing that Rainbow Dash here, a deer who has wings, conscripts her to fly for her to send set cakes all around the Equestria. And since she's best friends with the princess, everybody wants to be friends with her. Yay. And, of course, Luna sees right through this. She ain't having none of your tomfoolery. Yep. Or Bill Fullery. <laughs> yep. Or Charlie Fullery. Yeah. And the lesson here today, spoken by dear Silver Spoon, is do you think the lesson here is we should just be nice to everyone? And dear Diamond Tiara says, I don't think 
that was it. You know what, DT? I'm glad you're reformed because your older self is such a jerk. And it's funny. They all think it's they all all the other reindeer say Rainbow is weird, and Luna, <laughs> Luna reaffirms herself as a nice princess by standing up for her friend. I love it. But then she hates the geese. <laughs> Uh, one step at a time, one step at a time. And then, well, that was a rather entertaining story. But it looks like Cup of Joe says that, oh, the snow is coming down really hard. So they are going to be stuck in there for now. And Cup of Joe says, you know what, since you guys are going to be stuck in here, why don't you have a cup of coffee and keep yourself warm? It'll be nice. And the princess and Spike just say thanks and Spike wants more cookies. Yay. Oh my goodness, this one's my favorite one so far. Not just because the fact that it's friggin' rarity, it's also just how everything turns out. It's just fantastic. <laughs> although, although, before we go, we should compliment that Spike is starting his own review style. Oh? Oh. He says, I like that one. It had comeuppance. <laughs> Which one? Uh, the reindeer one. It had comeuppance. Ah, yes. <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's how you spell it. Sweet. Uh, you spell it very carefully. <laughs> but anywho, we move on to the second storybook, which this time Spike reads. So this story is, long story short, is the Nutcracker was it? Uh, Kinda. Yeah. It's, it's sort of the Nutcracker. It's the Nutcracker halfway through. Yeah, it's technically it's the Nutcracker and the Mouse King story. It's really the ball buster. Yeah. I mean, Rarity's taking no prisoners on this one. Essentially that story, but in this story, Rarity ain't having any because she doesn't want to play nice with a mouse. Oh, the mouse feels hurt. Oh, by the way, um, before I carry on, uh, this is not a plug for Target, but I find it rather interesting because this year, 2016, Target did an ad on their YouTube channel about said story, The Nutcracker and the Mouse King. And in this story, it's basically the Rap King. Versus the Nutcracker. And Rarity and Pinkie Pie were in there. So was Michelangelo and other stuff. It was kind of cool. Well, of course, Michelangelo is going to be there to confront the Rat King. I mean, you know, that's one of the turtle's oldest enemies. I, I said Rap King, not Rat. Well, <laughs> well, they can he can rap too. Although we won't talk about their uh, <laughs> attempt to rap. I, we, no. do, we do not speak of such things. <laughs> yeah, that's not. But long story short for this one. Similar, uh, similar story, but um, in this one, Rarity ain't having any. But here's what Linkara mentioned in his review, that said story could have been all a dream, which I find it fascinating. I never thought about it that way. It could have been all a dream. But then if it's Spike having the dream, wouldn't he be in the place of the Nutcracker? Uh, good point. I don't know. Probably. That's actually- you cannot fault my fabulous logic, for I am perfect. <laughs> if and then so. the Mouse King showed up. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, probably. I, I don't know why. This is just my favorite kick in the head when it comes to the story. It's the best thing ever for me. <laughs> but anywho, while Twilight and Spike are sleeping, Joe here was being nice and set up a whole, you know, Throwing a party at the train station with cookies and apples and hot cocos and cinnamon buns. And Spike here asks, like, what about your family? Isn't anybody waiting for you at home? And Joe replies, all I have at home is Puddles, my fish. He won't mind me being there. And we cut away to Puddles, holding a present for Joe. And, aww. So sad. So sad. I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so sad. Like, oh, poor puddles. Oh. You will believe a fish can cry yep. underwater. Yep. <laughs> uh, but anywho, next page we go to the oddest story yet. But this story is fun. It's Joe's favorite story. And it's it was the Night of Heartswarming Eve. This was original, right? Uh, it was no. the night before Christmas. Ah, so it was the night before Christmas. It was the night of hot warming eve, and all through the home, not a creature was stirring, not even the cat, whose name was Jerome. But, <laughs> should I just continue with this? Nah, we get C and D later on. No. 
But long story short, <laughs> the whole thing was too late. <laughs> oh god, no! Uh, but anyway, the whole thing is done by in rhymes. Like it's one of those fairy tale stories, which is really cool and fun. Oh god! Last week we did a rhyming story. Oh god! Norman, do they have like a Malaysian interpretation of the night before Christmas? No. Nope. Or no? No, nope. because. Uh, we do have Christmas here, but it's celebrated by the Christians. And you know what? Christian story, they recycle it again. We don't have anything, what you might call this, original. Mm. But anywho, um, I'm just going to summarize this. Um, it's a parody of A Visit from St. Nicholas. Um, Big Mac is resting in bed when he hears a loud noise coming from outside. He goes to the barn and discovered Applejack and Apple Bloom building something for him. Uh, the sisters decide to surprise their brother with the present, and to be sneaky, they enter the house through the chimney. Big Mac realized that the fire is still roaring in the fireplace, so he quickly puts it out with cider. So long story short, it's just really, really silly. It has good intentions, it's really funny, and the rhyming scheme is so, so all over the place. It works and it doesn't. Well, you know, they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Not true that. Mm-hmm. Yes, I brought up hell while talking about it in My Little Pony Show. I'm a nice person. You are, yes. And with that, Spike sleeps. Then gets woken up by Wendigos. <laughs> nope. It's just their friends coming to Cantalot because Pinkie Pie's uh, motto in life is no pony gets left behind out of a party. Except Big Macintosh, who's left in an ice crevasse. <laughs> yes. Uh, what was her logic again? Uh, they, uh, he can get out, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in a pinky party, no pony gets left behind. We left Big Mac behind. No, I think Rainbow Dash was the one that says, he can get himself out of that ice crevasse and get his flank up here anytime he wants. Probably he'll be fine. Meanwhile, Big Mac is in a cr- crevasse. Help! <laughs> oh. uh, nope! <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, you can be Spikes plus one. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Pinkie Pie says that Joe's not on the list, and well, um, she, I don't know why Pinkie's like this, but she just says straight out that Joe is uh, Spikes plus one. Done. And with that, they have a holiday. Festive boom. Everything's decorated pretty cool and whatnot and puddles yay he joins the party and oh wow the line here my pinky senses told me to break into a random apartment and take this fish <laughs> <laughs> it's just wow you're lucky <laughs> that that worked out so well pinky else you'd be looking at breaking and entering off to the who's gal this christmas yep sorry and, heart- and then look at her face it's it just it's crazy insane yep and Applejack, yeah, they're doing the whole gift-giving thing. Like, you draw a name out of a hat and you get a gift. And Fluttershy's gift to Applejacks are is apples. Yay! Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with them. You got me an apple. I know you like them. <laughs> uh, and Spike's worried about Big Mac. Anybody seen Big Mac? Nope. Uh, yep. And meanwhile, Rarity's all like, is that from my registry? I gotta say that that they're being a bit cynical for hearts warming, but in the end, uh, everybody looks like they had a good time, and everybody is just catching up with one another. It's a really well. Let's just say that you're not supposed to take this book seriously. I I hope not, because because these ponies are terrible, terrible people. Yeah, and in Dinkara's review, he did mention that, and yeah, I can see why. This is not a good book to recommend to somebody new. Like, they'll get the wrong impression of the ponies. So, friendship is magic, but making someone else pay the price is even better. <laughs> wow. I, I, I don't... Nah. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. You cannot resist the snark side. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, that is it, comics. So, Silver, what do you think about book, this comic book? Well, it's fun. I mean, uh, my favorite is also th- Twas the Night Before Hearth Warming, uh, just because of the art. That art is probably the most beautiful in the whole comic. Yeah, and I forgot to mention this earlier on, but 
this comic book is is done by multiple artists like um Katie Cook is involved, Brenda Hickey, Agnes Garbuska, Andy Price is involved. Uh, Katie Cook takes page 1, 2, 4, 6, 9, 10, 12, 13, and 18, and 20. Um, Brenda Hickey gets 4 to 9, Agnes Garbuska gets 10 and 11, Andy Price gets 13 and 17. So this book is done by multiple artists. So I think this is something really cool, and I don't mind seeing it again in future comics. Well, it'll probably have to be maybe next year's holiday special. Probably. But, uh, Carrie, I'm still sorry for cutting you there. It's okay. Wait, no, it's not. I'm sad now. Oh. You made, you made Silver sad. I'm disappointed in you, Norman. I'm sorry. I just had to point it out to the audience because I should have mentioned it earlier. Yeah, Mr. Humbug. What? Screws me all, screws me all like, damn, son. Hey, no, no, Scrooge be played by David Tennant. No, that's that's Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, I know. I'm talking about him. Uh, dude looks a little crazy with that beard. But I know. It's still David Tennant. I know. Tennant. Woo. Oh well, now we all have that song in our heads. Doom, doom, but doom, doom. no, no, no. Carry on, carry on. But is this was just a fun comic? Uh, sometimes the cynical humor. I don't know. This this is a show that doesn't seem all that cynical. So. I have more fun with it. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's part of the reason I watch it is because the ponies are not cynical. Usually the cynical characters are non-ponies. Griffin, dragons, and probably yak. We do not talk about the yaks. Okay. The yaks aren't really cynical. They're more of uh, Violent destructive in- personalities. Yeah. But they're loud. <laughs> uh, they're soccer hooligans. Yay. <laughs> but anywho, Sappy, what about you? Um, I'm kind of on the opposite spectrum of Silver. I kind of like the cynical personality. Yeah, it's not fitting, but yeah. I actually really enjoyed it because of the cynicism, because you know how uh, commercialized and happy, friendly Christmas can be. So sometimes it's nice to see something that is more traditional, but it's also... In the realm of being able to poke fun of itself, because nowadays commercialism has sort of taken over Christmas, so it's harder to enjoy it. Hmm, alright. Like, there isn't as much tradition anymore that I personally like. So, mixing in tradition with a cynical sense of humor, I don't know, I I really like it. <laughs> alright, In that then. sense. That cracker story was the best one because Rarity just breaks the fourth wall and walks up like, nope, <laughs> yeah. I'm done. This is not Rarity's job. She, uh, to be honest, I was surprised when she did that. Like, okay, funny, but the more you think about it, that's not Rarity. Rarity doesn't do that. But anywho. Oh, she would at the sight of a mouse. Eh, probably. Now, if Fluttershy had been involved, Oof. it might have been different. Yeah, true that. But as for me, um, I think this comic is pretty mm, interesting. Like I, like I mentioned before, it's like a mixed bag of good, bad. It's all a bit confusing because I'm with Silver in this one where the cynicism doesn't really work for it. But at the same time, I can see why it's entertaining and funny because it's, you know, it's something that we don't see the ponies do much. So probably is that one scenario for me where... I can appreciate it, but I don't like it kind of thing. But for my favorite comic or for my favorite story here, I would go for the <coughs> Towards the Night bef- uh, night of Heartwarming Eve. But I like the, uh, whatchamacallit, the Flying Reindeer, just because of how cute Rainbow Dash looks. Like, we got Rainbow Dash to be drawn as a deer. That is cute and cool. Yeah, I agree. So at least we covered the whole spectrum of comics. Like, I like reindeer, Safi here likes the mouse, and uh, Silver here likes seeing Big Mac in pain. I beg your pardon. It's Applejack who's in pain. Uh, true, that too. But in the end, this is a very entertaining comic, and it's something to not be taken seriously while you just enjoy the holidays with your family and friends. So, anywho, 
reviews and um, that's my opinion. Uh, you guys any, got anything to say? One, two, yep. three. <laughs> oh, not fair. Jerk. <sighs> uh, Merry Christmas to you too, <laughs> oh, Mr. Yeah. Pa Humbug. <laughs> I wonder who the Humbug guy now. But anywho, uh, from everybody on the MBS show, happy holidays and be safe. Uh, have a great time with family, but do be safe. I'll say it's Merry Christmas. Yes. yes. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> oh, God. Our European friends are going to get so triggered by that. Yeah, probably. I, I apologize. <laughs> but anywho, for next week's review, well, we're coming close to the New Year's. And, well, I'm going to say that we don't do New Year's resolution that well. So, how about this? Why don't we talk about the movies we seen for 2016? That'll be cool, because there's a lot of movies that came out this year, and we got opinions on them. So, next week is going to be us talking about this year's movies. What we think about it, and why you should either watch them or avoid them. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And I have been Sapphire Hotsung. And we'll catch you guys... Well, next year or next week for another amazing episode. Catch you guys next time. See ya. Ho, ho, ho. Bye. And all a good night. Yay. Oh, by the way, Silver, when you say you want to play Space Dandy Land, do you mean Space Dandy or are you thinking something else? Oh, I like Space Dandy. Oh, yeah. I haven't watched the second season yet. It's all about the booty, baby. Let's just say that. All I know is I love the zombie episode.